Okay, so uh, where do I start? Um, I want to start with this Coulomb's law, which says that if you have a charged particle with capital Q and small q, and the distance between them is r, then the, the force between them is f equals to negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qq over r squared, where this epsilon naught is called electric permittivity and stuff, so on and so on. Uh, which, if you take the Q away, if you take the Q away, then uh, this one is called voltage, electric field. Right? So, um, so electric field is gives you so, something that that will give you if you put a charged particle on that field, it will tell you exactly how much force it's going to experience. Right. So this is something to think about. You, you have, oh, by the way, everyone here took physics too, right? Some of you didn't take physics too. That's strange. Okay. Yeah. This should be like something that's at least AP physics. AP physics BC or something? Okay. <laughs> well, this, this should be a knowledge for every STEM major. This, yeah. uh, Okay, but well, anyways, uh, what we do know about this because of our intuition that we learned so far is that if you take any region here, take that one and take the, uh, take the divergence of this vector field, divergence is nebula dot, what do you get? Zero. Zero, because Divergence is the density of the flux. What's a flux? You take any region and you just think about how much force, uh, how much field is coming in and how much you're losing. If there's no charged particle inside, then the flux is zero. Okay. So the density of the flux will be zero as well. Okay. So that, that's a very important concept. Okay? Uh, the divergence is the density of the flux. So the density um, You know what? I want to put this as plus here, yeah, not minus. Okay, uh, so the the density will be zero. So, so this quantity is something that if you take the the nabla of it, you get you get zero. Now, <clears throat> another thing I want to say is that uh, if you just ask about the electric potential energy uh, given by this field, so if you take a one Coulomb charge right here, and then uh, if this Q is positive, it's going to push this to infinity, right? And as it pushed and pushed, it's going to gain kinetic energy because it's it's big feeling the force, right? So at infinity, it's going to have some kinetic energy. What is the amount of energy there? That's called the potential energy at this point, right? And that potential energy. You, you also have seen the formula for it, which is uh, electric potential. I think it's E? No. I think you use E for, for this one, electric field for E for this one. I forgot. I think you use U for electric potential, okay? And if, it's just simply the antiderivative of this. It's uh, of this. That's the electric potential. And the relationship between these two is that if you take the gradient of U, that's the electric field, and the divergence of the gradient of U has to be zero because th th this is your electric field, divergence is zero, right? Outside this dot, right, that's, that's going to be uh, that's going to be your 
That, that's going to be, be true. And, and this, what is this? This is nebula squared u, which is Laplacian of u equals to zero, right? So Laplace equation is true for any place that does not contain any charge. But then <coughs> you can see this and start asking, well, what about this point? What does that give us, right? Well, it has a singularity, right? It, it has, if it's zero, it goes up to infinity, right? So <coughs> you, can, you can say the following. Uh, I'm missing some negative here. Oh, well, anyways. You can say the following. You can say that nebula of this... Let's, let's get rid of all the coefficients for a while. This is this one. Okay. Yeah. The, so, so the, the, the Laplacian of negative 1 over r is going to be some delta function with some coefficient in front. Something in front. We know it's a delta function because if you have a charged particle with one coulomb, right, and you calculate the flux, I forgot the formula, but it's, I think it should be Q over epsilon naught, right, or one, one over epsilon naught. Any small thing, small region containing this charge is going to give you something like a constant. So what does that mean? That means uh, if you you have a function that's supported at this origin, and anything that has the origin in, in the interior will give you 1, and outside will be 0. That's exactly what delta functions do, right? What's a delta function? It, it has an infinite value at a single point, so that when you integrate over it, you get a positive 1, right? But then anything outside it's zero. That's what a delta function is. So that's what you get. Uh, and in general, you can think about the following question. So if the right side is zero, that's called the Laplace equation. If nebula of u is equal to some function f, that's called the uh, Poisson equation. And uh, let, let me let me do do one little quick calculation here, and then we'll, we'll uh, follow up with this discussion. Uh, what I want to show is that uh, if you take nebula of, uh, if you say A over R, okay, and let's say this is equal to, I want to find out what coefficient A should be so that I get a genuine delta function. Okay. Let's think about what that should be. So what I do is, uh, If you have a vector field passing through a region R, so some, some region, okay, how is flux defined? The flux of this vector field F over this region R is given as you take, uh, you go around the boundary of R, so it's a surface, right? and you take the vector field F dotted with the outward normal vector so that it picks up the component trying to escape this region and you do a surface integral all around it. Okay? That's one way to do it. Or you can use the fact that divergence of divergence is nebula dot, nebula dot of F okay, is the density of the flux so that this will be a double integral because it's a surface integral. If you do a triple integral over the entire region R, dV, there'll be another way to get the flux. The, the fact that these two are equal 
is called Gauss divergence theorem, okay? Or in some other context, Stokes theorem. Okay, so, so we have that. Now we stick in, let's take this Gauss divergence theorem and stick in the gradient of u, which is where u is this thing, or, or gradient of a over r. Okay. You know, when you have a scalar function, gradient gives you a gradient field, it's a vector field, and you take the divergence of this gradient vector field over this. Well, we just said that this has to be what? Well, I want this to be the delta function, right? And we're going to choose the r as the unit ball surrounding zero. So if you integrate the delta function over the unit ball, what would you get? It contains the zero, so what's the value of the integral? One. One, right? So this side will be one. So now we, we, all, we just need to take this a out and calculate what this gives you. So uh, r is 1 over square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? That's, that's the distance from the origin, square root, right? So what's gradient? You differentiate this by x and y and z, right? So if you differentiate this by x, uh, this is a quick exercise, you can try it. It'll be uh, 1 half comes down to negative Right, it will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared 3 over 2 times x. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Isn't that two? It will be negative? It will be negative, oh, negative 3. So, so uh, since square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared is r, it is the same as negative x over r. Oh, so I do, I do want a negative, sorry. So it's positive. So that means this is going to be uh, x over r cubed, sorry, r cubed, x over r cubed, y over r cubed, z over r cubed. Okay. Now what is, what's the outward normal vector? If it's a sphere, x comma y comma z on a sphere is outward normal already. Right? Do you agree? And because the length of this is r, you can divide this by r, and that will be a unit normal vector. But wait, if you multiply this, if you do the dot product, it's component-wise multiplication, and you, you add, right? So you get x squared plus y squared plus z squared over r to the fourth, and that's going to be equal to integrating 1 over r squared ds over the boundary of the unit ball. Uh, this could be a unit ball or any, any ball of radius r. What's the surface area of a ball of radius r? 4, three. Four pi over no, no, that's volume. That's volume. If you differentiate by r, you get 4 pi r squared, right? Yeah. So you end up with 4 pi r squared. This is a constant value, so you get 4 pi r squared times 1 over r squared, which cancels, so you get 4 pi as the, uh, as the value that you get here. And a times 4 pi has to be 1, so a must be 1 over 4 pi. So all this calculation gave us the following important identity, which is that uh, if you take negative 1 over 4 pi r, if you take, the, take this, you get delta function. Now, let's go back to the Poisson equation. And, and by the way, this one is called the fundamental solution. Professor, I don't understand why the norm vector is uh, x over r. 
it, it's like if you have a sphere, mm -hmm. x comma y comma z is already perpendicular to the sphere that you have. And then you're, you're dividing by the size of that vector, which is r. r is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, so that's the size. If you take any vector divided by its size, you get the, the unit vector, unit hour normal vector. This, this means it's a unit vector. Well, it's a, it's a good okay, sorry, we're running out of time, so let okay. me just continue. Okay. So that's called the fundamental solution, or Green's function. And by the way, uh, with, with similar idea, uh, you know, Coulomb force decreases by one of r squared because surface area grows like r squared, right? In 2D, the circles grow like 1 over r, and the antiderivative of that is ln, right? So in 2D, you get ln of r as your negative ln of r as your uh, fundamental solution, but this time the surface area would be not 4 pi, but it would be 2 pi, right? So it would be 1 over 2 pi. Uh, it goes to delta. And I, let me just go back to this one and we can finish, all right? So Poisson equation is saying the following. Uh, if I take any x, y, z, and you want to solve this over the entire rn, and I'm giving a very crude, crude calculation here, but uh, so this, this is not really a proof because a, I'm, I'm moving things in and out outside the interval freely, but here, here's what I'm doing. Uh, if you do f of x, no, f of a, b, c times uh, 1 over square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus c, z minus c squared d a, d b, d c integral, 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 negative infinity to infinity for everything Uh, this is like a convolution of two things, right? In other words, if you take this one you want and convolute it with this fundamental solution, and the fundamental solution is, oh, sorry, minus 1 over 4 pi. Is this one, negative 1 over 4 pi, 1 over r, but this is now centered at a comma b comma c. So the point is being changed as you do that. And if you apply the depth the Laplacian to the left side, you make it go inside and it hits this one. It turns into a delta function with x minus a, y minus b, z minus c, multiplied by f a b c with a triple integral. Sorry for being terse here, but you, sh you should know what I mean. Db. And what does delta function do? Delta function gives you 1 only when x and a are the same, y and b are the same, z minus c are the same. When, when these are all zeros, that gives you 1, right? The other case, it gives you 0. Right? So the only value that this will be producing is fx comma y comma z, when a and b are the same. A, a, x is a and y is b and c is z. So that's what you get. So what does that say? That I just proved that this convolution, which you can write it as f convolution of g r minus r prime, where r prime is a, b, c, r is x, y, z, this solves the Poisson equation in general. So it's just like uh, how, we, how I showed you the heat kernel. You, you solve the heat kernel by taking this fundamental solution and doing the convolution. Yeah. And you also have the homework problem where we solve ODEs by convolution. All these things tie in somehow together. If you have these kernels, they can produce solutions by doing such a thing. Okay. And you happen to get see this more often than, than the other ones because uh, Laplacian is ver a very important operator uh, for physical reasons. So you get to see these, this, uh, this thing appearing many, many times. Okay. That's why I wanted to show this to you.